Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. Today, Sister Power has the distinct pleasure of having a conversation with Dr. James McCoy. Dr. McCoy is a rheumatologist and is affiliated with the VA Medical Clinic and a member of the National Medical Association. The National Medical Association Annual Convention and Scientific Assembly is acclaimed as the nation's foremost forum on medical science and African-American health. Each year, African-American physicians and other health professionals from across the country convene to participate in the scholarly exchange of medical advances, discuss health policy priorities, and to share experiences through networking opportunities. The program opens in Honolulu, Hawaii on Saturday, July 27th with special sessions, workshops, and the official opening and continues through Wednesday, July 31st at the Hawaii Convention Center. Dr. McCoy, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you. Thank you for coming at the very last minute. I, we appreciate that so much. And I am so excited about the National Medical Association coming to Hawaii. But before we start chatting about NMA, give us a little background about you. I will start just with my medical um, part. I have been in medicine for like 40 years. And um, how I got interested in medicine was basically two things. The health care of my family. My father died when I was 10 years old. I didn't think that he was being treated appropriately or we were being cared for. But that was the way it was in South Carolina and North Carolina at that time. A lot of disparity health care with African Americans. So I watched my mom be the nurse and the doctor. Okay? At that time, the doctors would do house call, meaning that we didn't have money to pay. You don't have Medicaid and that kind of thing like uh, we have today. So the doctors didn't come out. So if you have money, you have to take the, your, your loved ones in and then uh, they will see. So he didn't get great care. And when he passed away and the health care of the community was really bad as well, it came to me when I was trying to make a decision, what can I make a difference in? And medicine came. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, after college, you have to put uh, your applications in. And I only put my application into three universities uh, Duke, Meharry, and Howard. Wow. But I wanted to go to Duke, I mean, not Duke, but I wanted to go to Meharry and Howard because all my life, it was just African-Americans and those were two African-American hospitals, okay? So I had an interview with both and uh, I was told that they didn't have adequate scholarship money for me because you need a full ride. At that time, a full ride was you need everything, okay? And we, can't, we can give you a partial scholarship, but we can't. So I said, okay. So then I went to Duke, and um, the wonderful doctor uh, that uh, interviewed me, he said, why do you want to go to medical school? And just out of my mouth, I said, because I hated white doctors. Oops. And, and he looked at me, and his face turned red, and he says, Say that again. I said, because I hated white doctors. He says, this is a predominantly white school. All of the doctors are white, pretty much uh, the patients that you will see uh, white. And you want to come here, and that's what you say. You're going to have to help me to understand this. I said, I'm from the South. I see the kind of health care being given to blacks. And more so, my dad, that he didn't get that kind of care. 
And I saw him being totally paralyzed. He had a stroke. Totally paralyzed, okay, from neck down. And the only really care was basically my mom. And when I, no one could help me to understand why is it that the doctors don't come and do house call. Uh, we didn't have the money to pay for health care. So my mom. So when you're seeing that kind of care and you are thinking that the doctors were um, responsible for that, then you develop, um, maybe hatred is a hard word, but then you develop the dislike, I'll use that, the dislike for that. Okay. But, you know, we chatted about this earlier, and we're going to come back and talk about that. We talked about um, why there are just almost no African-American physicians here in Hawaii, a very few. But we'll come back and talk you know, more about your story, because you are a rheumatologist, and we'll talk about your work. Uh, let's, get, and let's talk about the National Medical Association. Tell us a little bit about the National NMA. Well, NMA is an awesome organization, and you did excellent in explaining uh, what we do. And, but this, this is the thing. NMA was founded in 1895. You may want to know, well, okay, there's another organization that is called AMA, American Medical Association. So why would African Americans have to create their own organization? The reason simply, discrimination. Because we weren't allowed to join AMA, that's the white counterpart. So we did put together our own organization. And that discrimination really continued from the AMA all the way up to, um, I would say, the 1960s. But interestingly, um, the first African-American physician in 1981 became president of AMA. A black man? A black man. Became president of, of AMA. Around 1991. 1991. Yes, Dr. Bresto from California. Now, wait till I tell you this. In 2008, the president of the American Medical Association came to the NMA convention and apologized for their contribution of racism, discrimination, disparity in health when it comes to uh, African American. That was 2008. And now you move to 2019. The first African American female who became the 174th President, 2019, and that was a little better than a month ago. Ooh. So things have been changing, and um, we do have now um, members of the NMA on certain key committees with the American Medical Association, and we're trying to work forward, they're contributing what they can to make a difference uh, in health, but basically that's our, our entire mission, is make sure there's parity in health care for African Americans, and make sure we're educating the physicians where they can take care, do the best of care, give the best of care, not only just to African Americans, but to all people, and particularly those um, 
that don't get the kind of health care that they need. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. And I did not know all of that information. I'm sure our viewers are just uh, amazed on the information that you're giving us, why NMA started, which, you know, I can understand that. What does membership in the NMA offer physicians? The membership, number one, is the voice. It's the voice for African-American physicians. There are a lot of political things that you need an organization to go to the White House. I've been to the White House, and we're talking to um, senators and representatives uh, about different uh, issues um, and make sure they understand the needs and, and that's very, very uh, important. So we're the voice for physicians, and not only physicians, but we're the voice for the patients that we're cared for uh, as well. So education is a big um, part. And being able to go and make our presence known on the Hill or to the White House and make sure when there are things that come out that African Americans seem to be you know, push back, then we speak. That's good to know. You know, I, my sister was a nurse and my grandmother was a nurse. And I found even today, you have to be your own advocate for your health care. I'm, my husband is, we're, we're dealing with a health care issue right now. And I think people should know that do your homework, speak up to the, the doctor, and I think that there's, someone should accompany someone when they go into an office visit, especially if it's a serious um, health issue. Well, I agree with that. Uh, sometimes when you have somebody accompanying you and you are hearing things that kind of set you back and you, you, you have stress, you don't think and hear clearly because your mind is True. focused on this or that. And that's why it's good to have somebody there that can help you. Even, okay, I, I'm not at Kaiser now. Uh, I'm not at uh, the VA. I'm at, not at uh, Triple Army Medical Center. But I still have patients who go to these facilities that call me. Well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? This is what the doctor is saying. What's your take on it? I don't understand uh, this. And when I finish, I'm so happy you took the time to do that because I didn't, we didn't have that when, we, when I was growing up. Nobody to share anything. It was like a quick prescription and a pill and like my brother. You're out the door. Uh, one of my brother, cancer. Okay. And my sister would call about the kind of pain that he was having. And he, she would say, um, he's just drinking up his pills. And that, they don't swallow in the South. They drink the pills. So um, I said, well, what pill is he on? Now, he has one of the worst cancer, but he was on ibuprofen, which is a very mild, like joint pain medication, where others on stronger medication for the pain. Now, no one ex explained what that was. So the key is, it gives me honor to be able when people call me to help them to under, I'm not their doctors, but to help them to understand what's going on, what the treatment, and I give them a list of questions. When you go back to see your doctor, these are the things you should ask. Well, that's good to know. And when we come back, we'll talk further about the National Medical Association. Hawaii. え、2時からですね。日本語で、日本語で活躍されていらっしゃるハワイのいろいろな方をお招きして、え、ショーをゲストショーをお届けしています。え、ぜひ、え、ご覧になってください。<笑>
<laughs> Aloha, this is Scott Perry, and I'm the host of Let's Talk Hawaii at ThinkTech Hawaii. In this show, we're going to be speaking in English and Japanese, and I'm going to use my 30 years of experience to help many Japanese viewers improve their English skills, as well as learning many interesting things about Hawaii. You can catch my show every other Tuesday, 3 p.m. Hawaii time. See you then. Welcome back to Sister Power. And we have our special guest here, Dr. James McCoy, and we're talking about the National Medical Association. NMA is coming to Honolulu at the Hawaii Convention Center. And before we went to break, we were talking about um, the NMA and why NMA started and how it, it evolved, which is great information. So let's talk about some of the planning highlights for NMA. You've been a member for how long? I've been a member for about 40 years. 40 years. Oh, my goodness. Are you one of the speakers this year? Yes. For which session? Which workshop? Uh, this is on um, family medicine. Family medicine. Because I know... So I've sort of spoken to most of the sessions one way or another. Generally, this is a wonderful part about conventions by the uh, NMA. You go to a lot of conventions, you may be, you have a, a center, a, a central uh, drive, and usually, um, let's say if I go to a pain clinic, that's what you deal with. When you go to an NMA um, conference, you got all different sections in every aspect of medicine. You got OBGYN, you got orthopedics, you got rheumatology, you got family, family medicine, you got psychiatry, neurology, I can go on and on and on. You got all of these different um, sections that you don't get at most of the other. And that's, that's, that's what is really great about uh, a conference by the NMA. And I, you, I know NMA comes to Honolulu every five years, am I correct? Every five years, this is the fifth. And uh, the very first one was 1998. That was the first conference here in Honolulu. That was also the same year that we started our chapter here, the, Alo the Hawaiian Aloha Society of the National Medical Association. Which you are president of. Yes. How many members? We have active members. We have 10. When we started it in Hawaii back in 1998, we had about 35 doctors in Hawaii, 1998. And the thing about that, you get a turnover because of the military, because a lot of these doctors are in the military. And also, as they got a little older, some stayed here, still practice, and then they wanted to move back to uh, the mainland. Some moved back as far as um, job. All right, well, let's, I've always, ha always had a wonderful time at the NMA, and I'm not a physician, of course, but the sessions, the workshop, the people that you meet, the networking opportunities. Um, Meharry has a, a reception, and uh, let's say Meharry Medical College and Morehouse School of Medicine joint reception. That's on Sunday, July 28th. But I want to talk about uh, Dr. McCoy, NMA Council on Concerns of Women Physicians Service Award that will happen um, Sunday, July the 29th. Who did you nominate and why? Dr. Kimberly Kelly. Dr. Kimberly R. Kelly. Now the reason I nominated her, because she met every requirement to have that award. And she, not only is she an awesome anesthesiologist, she just loves 
people. She loves patience. A lot of times when we talk, like I kind of see myself in her, she see herself in me because I do some natural alternative medicine as well. But the way she does it uh, is just really beautiful to see her do that. And I went to one um, retreat, meeting, retreat uh, with her and it is so awesome seeing how people change. And uh, so she met all of the criteria and I nominated her with pleasure. I'm so excited about this. She's a dear friend of mine and I've been working with Dr. Kelly mm -hmm. and I want the audience, the viewers to know that her, her award is Sunday, July 28th at the Hawaii Convention mm -hmm. Center, 12 noon with lunch. Mm -hmm. um, there will be a VIP meet and greet guest Mm -hmm. special guest speaker at 11.15 prior to the awards mm -hmm. lun uh, luncheon. And I think the last time that NMA was here, Donna Brazil was the um, special mm -hmm. guest speaker, mm -hmm. and she just rocked yes. the house. Yes. It was wonderful. I, I, I just look forward. I think that mm -hmm. every physician or anyone who's involved in the healthcare industry, mm -hmm. that's the place to be mm -hmm. July 27th through July 31st, am I mm -hmm. correct? Yes. It's there. So, also, they have the Pace Setter Luncheon, mm -hmm. which I'm excited about. Uh, what I love about the NMA, they reached out to Honolulu to find out who's who, like, they, you know, mm -hmm. since you're a member. Mm -hmm. And the Pace Setter Luncheon is Monday, July 29, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. And the panelist, is your friend and mine, will be Judge Sandra Sims. Mm -hmm. She's retired, but she's the yes. first African-American yes. judge here in Hawaii, in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. And the second one is Marsha McFadden, the first African-American newspaper publisher in Hawaii and city editor of the Honolulu mm -hmm. Advertiser. And guess who is the moderator? Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. <laughs> so I am so excited. So why should doctors attend the 115th NMA Convention. Number one, when it comes to education, we do it big time with the latest information that we need to take care of our patients. Mm. Okay? So there's so much that gets into the news, so much research is being done. Some research is great, others not. You have to learn, okay. How do I dissect all of this information to make a difference in the lives of my patients? And NMA helps us to be able to do that. They present the latest information, okay? For example, I am talking about opioids. Ooh. Now, you've, you, you've heard so much about opioids over the past, I would say, four to five years, okay? Addiction, deaths, so much. So I will be talking about the opioid epidemic in this era. So how are we gonna treat patients with pain, okay? And especially those with cancer pain, what other things can we do? What about natural treatments? What about acupuncture? What about uh, massage and et cetera? Or is there any evidence that they work? Any use for those since now, uh, there's been a big drop in the use of opioids. So that's a topic uh, that I will be doing. So this is state-of-the-art medicine for taking care of our patients. And then it's a fun, a very fun, like you were mentioning, it is, it's a so very much fun, fun cause they're, uh, convention because there's so much is going on, okay? And um, like I said, I've been going to NMA for 40 years and I've enjoyed, wow. I've only missed in the 40 years three times and that was because of illness. Ooh, okay, well you look mighty healthy and well today. <laughs> so the Council, the Council on Concerns of Women's Physicians, they are offering a, a pre-medical student scholarship award. Now how are we gonna get the word out and where do we go 
So the applicants can apply for this worthy scholarship. Well, basically, it is about contacting schools with um, a third year or fourth year student who's interested in medicine. We call them pre-med or pre-medical uh, students. They know this is what I want to do, and what we do uh, in the NMA is especially uh, the concerns um, for um, women, medical doctors that are women, we want to give. We, are, we all have received in some way or the other. So when we go to different cities, we give. For example, just like um, uh, we have what we call camp, I'll come back to your question, okay. uh, camp, uh, right. camp uh, Zing, where we take children and we take them all around to the tourist places in Hawaii. So then they have different events of their own at night, but there are some educational components there as well. We have uh, walk a mile with a chow. And with that, th that part is free on, and you have all kinds of fun things for them, educational things. They get a backpack full of goodies. And basically what we're doing is introducing NMA and black doctors to the community. These are community kids that are being um, in, in invited. So with the scholarship, it's a great opportunity to introduce ourselves. A lot of people don't know who we are when we go to these uh, states. And, 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 but when NMA go, go to these various places, that's what we want to do. So we offer uh, the scholarship, and that's what we're looking to do. Yes, it takes um, talking to the different uh, schools, see what uh, students that they have mm -hmm. uh, that we can um, get them to fill out the application so we can make a decision and give to them. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. James McCoy, for this information about the National Medical Association. And again, we want to uh, invite all of the physicians to please come out to the Hawaii Convention Center and it starts July 27th through July 31st. Again, on behalf of Think Tech, Hawaii, and Sister Power, thank you for spending your afternoon with us. Alo oceans of aloha, peace, and love. Thank you. Thank you.